Why do we want to go back to the moon? Our last visit was in 1972 with the Apollo program and now over 50 years have gone by. Yet today it's being talked about once again. Hi, I'm Stefano and today I'll answer your most frequently asked questions about humans returning to the moon. For example, when will we return to the moon? Well, we'll be back on the moon in about two years if all goes well. But we're in no hurry. Let's have a look at why we want to revisit the moon first. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. Moon landings are by now just distant memories. The first astronauts to walk on the moon were Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin in 1969, while the last mission was Apollo 17 in 1972, so we're talking about over 50 years ago. However, for some time now there has been talk of a new space race, although compared to the 70s, its dynamics are somewhat different. At that time, during the Cold War, it was primarily the fruit of geopolitical and military rivalry between the United States and the Soviet Union. Today, though, the situation is a bit more complex. In what way, Tubo, is it more complex? I mean, why? Because the main reason for returning to the moon is primarily of a scientific nature. Our technology is indeed mature enough to face perhaps the most ambitious challenge ever. Constructing human settlements on other planets such as Mars, for instance. What do you mean, Mars? Weren't we talking about the moon? Yes, but building bases on Mars would currently be impossible. We need to acquire a lot more knowledge, such as learning how to produce water, oxygen, building materials and energy far from the Earth's surface. And the moon is the only celestial body near enough to our planet that can help us to acquire all this knowledge, knowledge that in the future we can put into practice on Mars. Besides the scientific motivation, there's also an economic one. Extracting resources on the moon has strategic importance, not just for space exploration, but also for the economy here on Earth. An example, the material that makes up the lunar surface, the so-called regolith, contains helium-3, which is an isotope of helium that is practically unobtainable on Earth, but can be used as a possible source of energy for nuclear fusion in nuclear power plants. In addition, on the moon we can extract various metals such as iron, titanium, aluminum and silicon, but above all elements that are essential for the functioning of our electronic devices such as rare earth elements, which are available here on earth, but in relatively limited quantities. Obviously the control of the moon by the major world powers would create new geopolitical balances of power, and this is indeed demonstrated by the fact that not only the United States is planning to send its astronauts to the moon, but it seems that China also wants to do so by 2030. At present, the United States are the only country to have officially included plans for a moon landing in their space program. Other countries instead have only made statements, so nothing official. Russia and India, however, have not yet expressed their opinions on the matter. Now that we have understood why there has been a renewed interest in the moon in recent years, let's answer the question that many of you have asked us. Why haven't we gone back in 50 years? Well, the answer is simple, because until today there hasn't been a valid reason to do so. As you can imagine, sending humans to the moon and bringing them back again alive is extremely complex and risky, and it is, above all, expensive. Consider that the Apollo program absorbed about 3-4% to of the American GDP, while today the programs are worth about 0.5% of the gross domestic product. In the 60s for the USA, it was worth the risk because the Cold War was ongoing and they had to beat the Soviets at any cost. But with the moon landing and their consequent space race victory, there was no longer a valid justification for such a large expenditure from an economic point of view. So redirecting funds to other objectives, such as sending probes into the solar system and permanently populating a low Earth orbit with the International Space Station, was the preferred course of action. At this point, there's only one more thing we need to discuss. How and when will we return to the moon? As I mentioned earlier, the only ongoing lunar program with plans for a human return to our satellite is Artemis, a NASA project. This program, which officially began in 2017, is the first since the historic Apollo program. 
In fact, it's not called Artemis by chance, as according to Greek mythology, Apollo's sister was known by exactly that name. One of the great innovations of the Artemis program compared to Project Apollo is the construction of the first lunar orbital space station, namely the Lunar Gateway, which will serve to facilitate the exchange of materials between the Earth and the Moon, with a view to the construction of future lunar bases. NASA currently plans to launch it in 2025, and its first use in an Artemis mission is scheduled for 2027. The program already successfully completed its first mission, Artemis Naminas, between November and December 2022. It was an uncrewed mission that was used to test all the flight operations and maneuvers that will be used for future human moon landings. For instance, the first launch of the new Space Launch System rocket and the orbital flyby of the moon by the Orion spacecraft were conducted, which in future missions will take astronauts into lunar orbit. Before 2030, five more missions are planned to take place, and the next one, Artemis II, aims to take four astronauts into orbit around the moon in November 2024, while Artemis III, planned for the end of 2025, will be the most historic mission, as it will be the first human mission to the surface of the moon since the Apollo era. So according to the NASA program, currently the best case scenario is that in about two years time, humans will once again be able to set foot on the moon. Well guys, thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video and if you want more space themed videos, let us know in the comments section below. I'll see you again in the next video, always here on Geopop, everyday science.